board people in Columbia City is what the memorandum was with. Okay, the HOA, correct. Yeah, we spoke to a couple people, it was a gentleman by the name Mike, and I believe the HOA, yeah, I didn't know what name they go with, okay. Right. So does that need a correction to the minutes themselves, or is that just a clarification, Lynn? It should be a correction to the minutes because it says the rec board person. So it should be that uh, it could be reworded however you want, but it was HLA board persons in Columbia City. Because uh, if you read it, you might think it's a uh, citizens of our city. I'll go back yeah, and I'll listen again, like but I have to type what is I'll said on the recording. I'll move to be accepted as corrected. Yes, you can have second, Howard. Oh, second. I believe the REC standard for something else on the rec. I think that's what we meant. I can go back to the notes and revisit the rec part. If I recall correctly, it was an REC board, not the rec. Yeah. Okay. So, did we get a motion to approve? I move they be accepted. Corrected. Okay. And does uh, someone want to? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. And let me. Sorry, I'm just jumping back and forth on screens. So next up, we have topics from the floor for attendees who are not otherwise on the agenda. So if there's anybody who is on the call who would like to um, speak up during topics on the floor, please raise your hand or unmute. Um, give it just a second and see if anyone pops up or if we just have a lot of people listening today. I don't see anything coming up. So we're gonna move on. Um, next up is counselor's report, but I don't see Doug here today. Let me just make sure he's not waiting to be admitted. So no Doug, unless anyone else has a report on behalf of Doug, we will move on. Great, we are just breathing through today. <laughs> Next up we have new business. So first under new business, we have introducing Parks and Rec Manager, Shauna Duggan. Congratulations. All right, so Welcome. congratulations Shauna. I wanted to kind of bring to the board that uh, we have a new stranger here as uh, our park and rec manager, uh, a local veteran of the city, which uh, happened to be a major kind of success and positive thing for our community. So Shauna will be taking over basically the park and rec uh, spot where I represent for now. So she will be working closely with Thad as well with you guys and kind of will be stepping in into different roles in public works, uh, overseeing the role of parks and recreation manager. So Shauna, if you have anything to say, you're welcome. Thank you again for joining us and uh, everybody's super excited for this opportunity. Welcome. Awesome, thank you. Yes. I'm excited too, so thank you for the opportunity. Awesome, thank you. All righty, next up we have interviewing the Parks and Trails Commission applicants. So we have four applicants for our one vacancy. Right now, um, we have sent out all the applications to the members of the Parks and Trails Commission, and we're just going to go through uh, the plan is we will um, call on each one of you in order and we'll do a little interview. If you can unmute and turn on your video um, when it's your turn, that would be great. And maybe if you can start out by telling us kind of why you applied, what interests you, and just overall um, your kind of introduction and anything you want us to know, that would be great. And then we'll go through and ask any questions, any of the commission members who have questions. And then 
after we get through all the applicants um, on the agenda, when we get down to discussion items, then commission members, we can kind of discuss and figure out how we want to vote and make a recommendation to city council. So for those who have applied, uh, the process is that we'll make, make a recommendation uh, to city council of who we think should fill the spot, and then it will go to city council for a final vote. Does anyone have questions before we get started? Oh. Awesome. Okay, so first up is Brandon Sundin, and hopefully I'm saying that right. Do we have Brandon on the line? Yep, you said it Hello. perfect. Great, welcome, thank you. Um, do you wanna go ahead and do a little introduction and tell us why you decided to apply for the Parks and Trails Commission? Yeah, so I am uh, Brandon Sundin. I, I recognize some of you. I've worked with you in different capacities. Um, uh, born and raised here in St. Helens, I grew up here, and so I grew up attending and enjoying our city parks and now I'm doing the same with my kids so moved away for a few years to go to school um, moved back to St. Helens about six years ago and I've got a first grader and a second grader here so we use the parks regularly and uh, enjoy going out and exploring the city and seeing new things so um, but I enjoy volunteering love trying to make a difference when I can and so don't have a lot of extra time but I do think this is something that uh that I could fit into my schedule and that would be enjoyable for me. Um, I currently am also a volunteer for the Columbia County Museum. And so one of my big passions is history. And I've always thought um, it would be so cool in our parks to incorporate more of our history. We have such a rich history here and people go to these parks now and they have no idea who Mr. Godfrey was or who were the McCormicks? Why is it called McCormick Park? Um, and I, Heine Human, he was such an important figure here in St. Helens for so long. And my own kids, they think that, that the little dog park there in the corner, that's for the dogs. And then the other parts, the human park. So um, I just think there's so much more that could be shared in our parks relating to the history and, and the rich history we have in here in the community. But uh, I love being a, a citizen of St. Helens, love going to the parks and enjoying the, the amenities there. And um, love, like I said, trying to volunteer and make a difference when I can. And so um, thought this would be a good fit. So. Great. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to just a couple of things that I want to confirm. Just you still live in St. Helens city limits, correct? Yep. Okay, great. And then um, just want to confirm that you would be able to attend the meetings on the second Monday at 4 p.m. every month. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And then the other thing just to note for everybody is that this is a midterm election and so, or not election, a midterm appointment. Um, it's the right word for that. Um, so it would end on 12-31-2022. And then um, anyone who wants to ask questions, go for it. Go ahead. I do. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> do you have a culture as a teacher? Can you say that one more time? Brandon, can you hear me? Can't hear me. Yeah, I can hear you now. Did, did you have Mr. Belcher as a teacher? I did. I did. Um, I was trying to remember what. I know. Uh, I know. I had one class where we we would walk over to kind of the wetland site back behind the high school and do tests on the water and stuff like that. And I think I think I had Mr. Belcher for that class. Was that advanced biology, Jerry? Environmental science. Yeah, I think that's it. Just a few uh, years ago. Yeah, I know Jerry's getting a lot older. <laughs> now I've got one question for him. Okay, Jerry. Is, Jerry has his hand up, so let's let Jerry oh, okay. go first, and then you're next, Howard. Howie, I went through proper procedures. I cut <laughs> off screen and put my hand up there. Sorry, I figured out where that stupid thing is yet. <laughs> Hey, Brandon, on your uh, application here, it says uh, you volunteered many hours of research into the McCormick Park and Veterans Memorial. So what are a couple of things that you found out historically about uh, McCormick Park and Veterans Memorial that you think that people would like to know? Well, um, I just think I don't think a lot of people know what McCormick Park was. Um, the McCormicks were a very big and prominent family here in St. Helens for many years. Uh, they lived downtown on Knob Hill. And when they wanted to go to their country estate, that was McCormick Park. So when they wanted to get out of town, they 
they'd go to McCormick Park and they had a little house there and they had a, a swimming pool and um, Mrs. McCormick hosted the St. Helens Garden Club there for years. And um, it was a really kind of a big deal if you got invited to the McCormick estate. And so um, just a lot of really cool history there. But um, when the centennial of World War I was going on, I had done a lot of research on the local Columbia County veterans who were killed in World War I. And when I went to look at the Veterans Memorial, this is the old Veterans Memorial before the current one, I noticed that a couple of the names that I had found uh, were missing. And so I approached the VFW and said, what, what can we do to get these names added? And that's when they let me know. They said, we're actually looking at revamping the whole memorial and redoing it. And so do you think you could help us out and make sure we're not missing any other names from the other world wars? And so um, I don't know how many months I spent on it, but doing lots of research in the newspapers and museums and archives and ended up finding over 30 World War II veterans from Columbia County that should have been on that memorial before that weren't. And so now they are. And so um, that's one, one part of the parks that I really enjoy visiting is that place just because I had a had kind of a small part in it and uh, really enjoyed doing research and work like that. So um, kind of proud of that. I, I enjoyed doing that. I'm not quite through, Carmen. Okay. <laughs> okay, Brandon, you go down to the park there. And there's this area that's, I don't know, 30 or 40 yards wide and maybe it's been a while since I've been there, 60, 80 yards long of these great big rocks that are in kind of a big rectangle. What's that? So that was that was Nellie McCormick's um, personal garden space that was she called it her Japanese style garden. And okay. so if you go if you go back there now, you can still see remnants of Japanese maples and uh, there's some rhododendrons and some other flowering plants in there. We, I went, dug through there a little bit last year and took some pictures and wrote a little story about it. But uh, I would love to see that revamp sometime because that was always kind of the highlight is, is Nellie would go show people her, her Japanese garden. Um, and like I said, you can still see the boulders and you can still see remnants of it back there, but lots of blackberry bushes and other things that have uh, grown in over it over the years. But yeah, that was kind of her her special touch on the place there. Yeah. I went oh, out there with, uh, oh. Go ahead. I snuck in, I think. I was, <laughs> I was just going to say, I, I went with Jim Davis, former park superintendent, years ago out there, and, and that had been untouched for the most part. Was it still in full bloom well, without being worked on or anything? It was really quite amazing at the time. They've lost plants since then, but it was a it was quite a sight to see it out there. And I assume Jerry's seen it when it was in its splendor too. And if I it was someone correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't McCormick Park all 84 acres of it donated to the city from the family? So I believe uh, when I talked to Jim Davis about this, he was um, parks director when it was purchased, and I believe um, I believe the city purchased it. Um, he said they had the option to purchase the golf course or the McCormick Park acreage, and they decided to purchase the park. That sounds right. I believe hey, that John, was in the 70s sometime. 70, it's 70.7 .7 acres. John? My memory. My memory. 70.7 acres. It's right in the book here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I want to move on to Howard. Howard, you want to ask your question now? Um, yeah. I know you said you're available while we're kind of meeting on Zoom. If we ever go back to meeting in person, I just wanted to make sure you're available to be in person when that time hopefully comes back. Yeah, I've, I've, we've got enough family around here that I can find somebody to to send the kids okay. over to for a little bit. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's Great. the only question I had. Next. <laughs> Thanks, Howard. Lynn, I believe, Hi. is up next. Hi, Brandon. Hi, I just want to let the commission know that uh, when I was doing research, uh, besides what Jerry Belcher had provided to me, I went to the museum and uh, Les and Brandon were very helpful with historical facts of Dalton and where they owned the property and all the history that was with them as well as pictures. So very knowledgeable. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Um, and then I just have one question for you, and it's a question I always ask any applicant is, what is your favorite park and why? Um, I, 
I would have to say McCormick Park probably. That's because now I think that's the one we frequent the most with the kids and um, just for different reasons, whether it's going on the walking trail or going to visit the Veterans Memorial or um, going there for T-ball with my, with my kids. And so I think the one we use the most and probably enjoy the most is McCormick. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Does anyone else have any follow-up questions for Brandon before we move on to the next person? Alrighty, and Brandon, we'll uh, have a discussion at the end of the meeting. You don't have to stay for that. Um, and then we'll kind of vote amongst ourselves and then uh, make the recommendation to city council. So we will be in touch. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day, yeah. everybody. Yeah. You too. Bye. And then next up, we have Jenny Carlson. Jenny, if you want to turn your camera on, if you'd like to, and unmute. If you don't have camera, that's okay, too. There you are. Hello. I know I'm sick. Oh no. Oh, I sound bad. oh no. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, do you are you able to give a little intro and background of why you're interested? It's just a funny voice. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but um, you know, I got started helping out. With us. I got started because, you know the parks are so important for families. I think St. Helens does such a good job of dedicating the real estate. And I just think that, you know, this committee has done so much work to make them more accessible to more people in our community. Um, because parks are, you know, about flowers, they're about dogs, they're about kids, they're about seniors. It's like, there's a park for everybody. I think that, you know, just continuing that work as somebody that uses the parks for my work and for my personal use, it just seemed like an easy, low hanging way to be involved because it's something that's important to me. Great, thank you, Jenny. Um, just a couple of the other items just to bring up, just confirm you can attend meetings second Monday of every month. Yeah. Awesome. And then you live in St. Helens City Limits still confirming. Okay, yeah. great. And then um, I think we can, if there's anything else you want to share now, go for it. Otherwise, we'll go into questions. Yeah, I didn't. <coughs> I don't know how well I know all of you, but different things I've crossed paths with most of you. But, you know, I was involved with the group that did the Splash Park downtown. I've been involved with the group that have done different cleanup efforts all over town, beautification efforts, you know, and I worked with the Main Street group for a number of years. And it's like, I think that Parks really has a key role to play in livability for our community. And that a lot of people don't see that role, but all the great communities that win awards, that win big jobs, have great park systems. You know, you go there and it's like, wow, this is, they have a university here or they have this big museum here and look at all their parks. It's an integral part of attracting visitors and financial investment. I think that people don't often realize how important parks are to economic development. That's all I had. Okay, thank you, Jenny. I'll go first with my question. Uh, your favorite park and why? <laughs> really depends on the season. I like the, I'm a photo person. And so I like any place where I can walk. So I like all the trails up there at 4th Street and Howard's neighborhood. Um, all those trails and that go down into the, um, to the waterfront, all those trails are great places to take pictures of flowers and pictures of really interesting landscapes. And winter walks through the, um, the disc golf course is just a really place I find a lot of peace and a lot of solitude and place to kind of rest my stress. Um, I did a lot of walking there um, through my journey through cancer and I just found it a very healing, that space to have that right here in our city where anybody can use it for free any day of the week, I thought was awesome. Great, thank you. 
And Jerry, you have your hand up so you can go next. Always, <laughs> Carmen. Always, you're so polite. <laughs> Hey, two questions, <laughs> Jenny. One is, I noticed that you went to a Ford Leadership. Tell I us did. a little bit about that. Um, I did the Ford Leadership in 08, and that was the project that did the Splash Park. Downtown, Port, um, downtown St. Helens, the little spray pad. And then after that, I was recruited to teach the next project that did the banners on the highway. And then I helped the banner, the project that did the safety preparedness packs. And so I've either taught, volunteered, recruited for everything that Ford Foundation has done in our community for the last 12 years. So kind of trying to keep those funding streams and those connections alive in our community and try to bring that stuff back to our community because being a rural, it puts us in a unique position you know, once you've done those leadership cohorts and then you're a community of a certain size and you meet a certain disadvantaged criteria, you're kind of an easy picking to get money from Ford. So whether it's money for a rec department or money for a rare volunteer, it's a way that we get money. So, I mean, I love doing it because I met more people. I moved to St. Helens in 95, I worked in Portland. I didn't know anybody. So when I got laid off in uh, 2002 and I still didn't know anybody and somebody, um, Shauna Sykes talked me into doing Ford Foundation because she's like, this will be great. This will be great. You'll meet people. And my ex-husband, he's like, Shauna's awesome because they went to school together. And he goes, do this class with Shauna. It'll be great. So needless to say, 12 years later and a couple terms on council. So I can't complain that I don't know anybody anymore. Now I like try to sneak home on the back roads. So I don't want to see what I'm doing. <laughs> but. My, my other question you've already touched on. I was going to ask you about what you thought the, the role of, of urban trails are in the I city of St. Helens. The, the role of urban trail to me is connecting the neighborhoods and connecting the community within itself. So I am a walker. I love to walk. Um, I think the role in our community that has so little sidewalk in a lot of areas, I think urban trail fits um, a void that we have in, excuse me, fully accessible parks. Because if you're somebody that has a walker or a wheelchair or a power chair, our parks are not very accessible at all. I mean, not at all. As somebody that has supported people for the last three years in the community, for in every park within an hour of St. Helens, we are, you know, I would put us like in the, the bottom of the barrel as far as how accessibility we are for wheelchairs. So I think that you know, I can, now that I live at 7th and Plymouth, I see so many people walking, pushing a wheelchair, pushing a stroller, pushing, you know, going around on their electric, you know, what do you call those scooters and stuff. I think that urban trails play that role of teaching people that you don't have to go to a park and you don't have to be able to do a 5K to get out and see your community. So it, it just brings a level of accessibility. I grew up in Portland, in old Portland. And so I love walking around on the streets and noticing people's yards and making observations of people's flowers. And it's like, ooh, I like that plant. They take a picture of it. I like that plant and then go try to hunt it down. I just, I like appreciating the architecture and the history of our community, as well as, you know, other things because it's one of the few things you can do for free anymore. Any other questions, Jerry? No. Okay. Thank you, Jenny, thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for Jenny? <coughs> All right. 
Any final words, Jenny, before we move on to the next person? No, just thanks for being patient about my voice. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you for joining us despite not your voice. So <laughs> not COVID. So feel better soon. <laughs> yeah, feel better. All right. And we'll let you know. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Next up, we have Shannon Mulliken. Shannon, if you want to unmute and turn on your camera, hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you want to give a little intro about yourself and why you're interested in the Parks and Trails Commission, that would be great. And then we'll ask you a few questions. Okay. Um, so I was born and raised in Columbia County, so it's something that's kind of near and dear. Um, I work in construction, so I actually tear down all of the prettiness that is everywhere. Um, so I thought this would be a good way to kind of give back in that. Um, I have a third grader son. And then I also have two really, really big dogs that have to be out 99% of the time. So we use the trails all the time. Um, I live right next to the botanical gardens. So we walk through there probably oh. two or three times a week. We go to McCormick all the time. Um, and just trying to get out and see more and do more is really what brought me around to this. But also, like I said, I have a three-year-old son. So being more involved will help him to understand that being involved is how you get what you want, where you want it. Um, kind of all I got. Okay, great. Uh, just to kind of follow up on that, is there anything specific that you want to see done in our parks that kind of prompted you to uh, apply? Yes, but no. Um, okay. <laughs> We're coming out of winter, so we all know that everything is absolutely disgusting during winter. Um, there's over the last two or three years, there's been quite a bit of updates and upgrades and things that we've seen. And I mean, I see what Shanna does because my son goes to the rec center. Um, so some of the things there are just fantastic how they bring it back around in McCormick. Um, I'm sure that I will come up with things that I see as I go. Awesome. Thank you. And then just to confirm, you still live in St. Helens. You just said that. Um, and then uh, you have the ability to attend meetings on the second Monday at 4 p.m. every month. Okay. Awesome. And then um, since no one has their hand up yet, I will ask my question first and then whoever wants to raise their hands. Um, so favorite park and why is it your favorite? Um, I love the botanical gardens. Um, like I said, we go there a couple times a week. They're during season. They, every season they have their own things that are absolutely beautiful. Different flowers, different foliage that pops up. Um, spring, I'd say about a month, and it's going to be absolutely a beautiful walk through there. And that's probably one of my favorite things about it. Awesome. Thank you. And Jerry has his hand up. Go ahead, Jerry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Carmen and... Uh... Myself, we live very close to the botanical gardens. You, I lived on North 2nd Street. I was your neighbor, would have been your neighbor for years. I lived there for 18, over 18 years. Um, but, the question, but the question I have, Shannon, is it says that your title position is a project engineer. So what, what do you do? With, what, what's your job description and what do you do? Um, I work for a mechanical contracting company. So we install piping. Um, I'm actually out at Intel um, on site currently. We install all of the chemical piping on site. Hmm. And what, what do you, what's your, what's your role in this, in the, in, in at work? Essentially, I'm a project manager. Um, the project engineer is a fancy title for an assistant project manager. Gotcha. So running the work. My oldest daughter is a project engineer. I'm proud of her. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. All right. Does anyone else have questions for Shannon? Mm -hmm. Nothing. All right. Anything else you want to share with us, Shannon? No, just thank you for your time. 
Yeah, thank you. We'll let you know after we uh, make the recommendation to city council. Thank you. All right, and last but not least, we have Jeff Grundy. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And let's see if Jeff is on the phone. Ah. I think that might be John's phone number that he's talking on. I don't okay. think Jeff showed up. Okay. Do we not have a forum now? I don't see. Well, I think we do. We're still good, right? One, two, farther. three, four, five. We have more people now. Yeah, I'll just join. Okay. Hi, Paul. All right. Oh, Paul's here. Hey, Paul's yeah. here. Unfortunately, I had another meeting that ran over. So sorry. No worries. Thank you. Um, okay, I don't see Jeff on, so I think that's it for interviews. I'm just double checking the list really quick before we move on. Sorry. Scrolling. Seems okay. like with uh, not seeing people in person, uh, there's more meetings than there used to be. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It's so much yeah. easier to schedule a meeting. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so that's it for the interviews. And like I mentioned before, we will uh, kind of discuss as a commission in the discussion items. Um, so now let's move on to the next item, which is grant opportunities for urban trails. All right, so I think that's me here. So Carmen, actually you had sent this opportunity over to, um, I believe Mohammed and myself. So let me see if I can share my screen to show you okay. all. I saw it really last minute, so I apologize. <laughs> I saw that the deadline well, was only a few days out. Actually, maybe that wasn't the one then. Okay. Um, can you all see this? Yes. Okay, so there's a recreation trails program. So the grant overview is um, April 1st is when it opened. April 15th, there is a webinar. And then April 30th, letter of intent. June 15th, it's due. So I had seen this and um, thought that this might be a good thing to explore further for the urban trails that we're looking at doing. And my question is, is one, if we could make some sort of um, like side committee or something to help push us along. I think you you all have an urban trails committee right now, right? Or advisory um, to kind of look and start doing the work of putting it together and I can help, you know, put, fill in the pieces and stuff, but I will need some help with this. So I'm just wondering if anybody has capacity to help with this project. Um, if anybody has capacity on the 15th to look at the, the webinar, I'm sure it will be recorded that we can look at another time too. But it looks like um, the April 30th is when the letter of intent is due. So I honestly um, have not had a lot of capacity to look through this to see, you know, what the guidelines are and if it would fit with the urban trail. And I have not yet met with anybody on the urban trail to see what you know, the plans are and stuff for that. So I was hoping that those who have been doing the work, if they can help me navigate through this to see if it would be a good opportunity for us to look at some funds. I would be happy to help with that. Um, I can't attend the webinar, but I could sign up for it and hope that they have a recording. Um, and I'd be happy to kind of review materials. And then if anyone else is interested and wants to join in and help, maybe we could meet and discuss. Yeah, I mean, I, I would be interested. And I, mean, I know I'm pretty busy, but certainly something that would interest me. Okay. What, and I can uh, start an email. Shannon, Perfect. what was, what's the date on that? Um, so we just have to have a letter in, of intent by April 30th, and then the grant application is due June 15th. And then um, it looks like the funding, let's see, the funding looks like it'd probably be in winter, spring of next year, maybe, because it's November 21 is when they're going to hear the recommendations at the commission meeting. So, so you know, when time, when was your when was the meeting you were going to have about this, or have you scheduled one? 
Um, so we haven't scheduled one yet. There is a webinar on April 15th, if anybody can make it from 930 to 1130 to just kind of hear what the grant cycle process is and what the application requirements and such are. Is that something that you would be available for, Jerry? You know, I have two doctor's appointments every year and one of them is, that's this coming Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that appointment is at 9.30. <laughs> And then I'm and going I could on totally, a lot of times they record them as well, like Carmen and I were saying, and I think that I might be able to jump on just for a little bit of it, but I, I'm sure we can get some information for it so we can do it. But maybe if you all want to find a date that works for you all to meet, um, we can do it here at the rec center if you're comfortable with that. And we can um, sort of hash out the details for um, the letter of intent and then start working on the grant to see what sort of things we can plug into it um, with what we're wanting to do for the urban trails. If it's all right with Carmen and you, would it be okay if I met, I'm gonna, I'm leaving Friday and I won't, I'm gonna be gone about 10 days or more. I think I'm coming back the 24th, I think. Um, Carmen would be all right if I met, cause I need to talk to you about some things in, in Columbia uh, Botanical Gardens too. Would it be all right if I, met with you and you tell me told me what happened and that sort of thing definitely yep okay i'll i'll meet with carmen when i get back on the after the 24th sounds good so i have paul down as interested anyone else that's interested mm, no. nope okay that's fine um, I will, I'll look at this website. Uh, Shauna, do you mind emailing this link to us? Yeah, I can, I'll email it to you. And this might even be something that, you know, isn't a right now thing too, but something that's good for our radar um, for future opportunities. Sometimes we hear about these things super last minute. I can't remember even how I heard about this one, but yeah, and I Jenny just emailed me, um, Jenny Dimshow, asking to meet with me about it as well. So there might be other thoughts for the city for this type of grant. So we'll just kind of plug along forward. But yeah, I will get you some more information and send it over. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. And anything we can do is good for that program. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always looking for grants. Um, I've been successful in getting about, well, $79,000 so far for this year for the REC program. And so I'm starting to look at park opportunities as well. So anything you see, please send over. And if I don't have capacity to do it, I'll reach out to the commission as well, because I know we have a lot of folks here that know the information and can help with the process and see if we can get some monies coming our way. Awesome. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. Let me see. Next up, we have possible property purchase or trade. I'm guessing that's Matt, maybe? No, it's no, me. It's Carmen. Jerry. Oh, it's Jerry? Okay. Yeah. Hey, I, as you guys know, Carmen and I live down here by the Botanical Gardens, and we are going to do some cleanup this spring. By the way, Carmen, I've, I've talked it. to Shannon, yeah, yeah, but we'll get to that later. Okay, uh, I wish I had something to show, but there is uh, a little, right around five acres of property that's for sale, right on the east side of the Botanical Gardens. And it's owned by Richard Bailey and... Uh, Mr. Kersley, Dorel Kersley. They're both developers and builders here in St. Helens. And they've owned this property for, for a long time. Um, what I would like to see happen is the city either buy this property or trade for it. And a couple things, I'll just kind of give a little background here into this here. 
you know, this is, I'm getting this from our Parks and Trails Master Plan adopted in July 2017. It says, if the population grows, the object is to provide enough additional acreage to maintain the jurisdiction's desired ratio of parks per 100,000 residents. Well, right now, well, in 2019, the population of St. Helens was uh, 13,559. And the Portland State, uh, I'm not sure what their department is called, but they study population and urban issues. They estimate that the St. Helens will grow 4,000 people in the next nine years. So in the year uh, 2030, there will be, they estimate that there will be 17,482 people in St. Helens. So, and, you know, and St. Helens will probably continue to grow after that since we're located so close to Portland and we're one of the few undeveloped areas. Um, as far as nature parks is concerned, I could go on and on here, I won't do that. But on page 46, it says uh, there's what they call a uh, level of service. And uh, in nature parks, St. Helens, uh, we have two nature parks. And in these nature parks, uh, we have Knob Hill, which is 6.6 .6 acres and Columbia Bot Botanical Gardens, which is 3.2. So we have 9.8 acres in nature parks. And um, this was projected, what I'm gonna say here, this was projected for 2020, so for last year. So last year in the master plan, it says that uh, we needed an additional 21.4 acres of, of nature parks. So that was last year. So in nine more years with another 4,000 projected people, we would, we would need more. Um, I think this would be really a, a great opportunity to increase the size of the botanical gardens. Uh, the botanical gardens runs from Belton Road back, but if this land was purchased, it would go all the way back to Clay, uh, the Great Cliffs Drive. So people could, you know, do what they're doing now. They could keep, you know, walking around it. Plus, the park is now a little over three acres, and with the additional property, it would be about eight acres. Uh, I think the point being is that we have this opportunity to, the city has the opportunity to get this land now before it gets developed into houses. And the city lacks enough nature parks, as I've stated here, and I think this would really increase it. Um, and I think it would be a good deal. So um, Mr. Kersley and Mr. Bailey, uh, local people, I, I know Rich Bailey relatively well. Um, and uh, what they're asking currently for the piece of property is $275,000. That works out to about Oh, I figured it out. $55,000 an acre, I think. So, uh, you know, I really don't know if that's the market value. I'm not a real estate person, but if the city would consider purchasing this, then, you know, they could deal with it. The other thing city could do, since both Mr. Kersley and Mr. Bailey are developers, they originally bought this land to put houses on, but my understanding is, I don't know if this is, I've been told this by numerous people that it costs too much to develop the roads and the sewers and all that to get down there to make it profitable for them. So they've got this property they're sitting on that's for them, I'm just making an impression, I'm, I shouldn't, that they would like to sell this property. And I think they would be very happy to maybe, you know, sell it or maybe trade it. I know that the city owns some property out on Millard Road 
And we've talked about that property a lot. And I know the city, especially the mayor and the city council, they wanna develop the front part of that. Um, I know that we, I've been told that we also have other land available, which I am not aware of, but you know, the city does have that property on Millard Road that they could you know, trade a portion of that and that would get that area starting to develop as I understand the city wants it to start getting development. So my, my push right here is I would like to see the city purchase the five acres from Mr. Kersley and Mr. Bailey and include that in, and then enlarge Columbia Botanical Gardens. Hey, Jerry, there's a question in the chat from Emily Martin about what property we would trade in order to obtain this new site. I don't know if she has an additional question, but I just wanted to throw that out for you. What, what was her name? Uh, Emily Martin. Emily? Hi. Um, hi, Emily. Hey, good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, the Parks and Trails Commission, we are we make recommendations. Wouldn't you say that, Carmen? Is that the right way to say it? Yep. We make recommendations. We can pass recommendations and they go on to the city council. And the city council, they have the final word. We just advise them to it. So I have no idea how much money, I don't know if the city has 275,000 or if it's negotiable to 200,000 or whatever. Uh, I have no idea if the city has that kind of money, but I do know that they do have land and I've been told that. And I would hope that maybe Mr. Bailey and uh, Mr. Kersley would accept a trade, but I have no idea what that, where that would be located. located. So first of all, we got to get past this group. If this group thinks this is a good idea or not a good idea. So if, you know, we'll, make a proposal and if it passes, then it goes on to the city council and then it may move forward from there, it may not. I appreciate you answering my question and actually the next question is also echoing the second one I had for you. In your mind, are you thinking you would want to turn this into another nature park or expand the botanical gardens? Are we thinking have more ornamental plants or try to protect the natural area that might be there? Well, I don't have, I'm not real computer savvy here, but this is a brochure that they have for selling the property. Uh, and I probably can't see this very well, but yeah, I guess you can. Can you, can you see the red area there? Oh, yes. Matt just said he has the property on Zillow if we want him to share the screen. Here, I'll pull it up. He gave the link. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, I'll pull with it up the on Zillow and share. Will the is the botanical gardens also going to be shown? Because um, I'm just going to show the listing that you're showing us. Oh, the, okay, good. Okay, perfect. Can okay. you guys see that? Yes. Okay. So where the star is, that's the property that Mr. Kersley and Mr. Bailey own right there. Okay. And the botanical gardens is this three, what did I say it was? 3.3 acres, something like that. This, this is the botanical garden. The Columbia Botanical Gardens is right here. Here is Belton Road right here. And over here at this end over here, this is Great Cliffs, Great Cliffs right here. So currently there's a trail that you know goes through here like this like that and people are always walking through there so to answer your question i see this as a as um an addition to the columbia botanical gardens it wouldn't be a it would so besides it being you know three acres now would be a little over eight acres and and i think for the future as we grow you know i think this is a great opportunity for us to uh purchase that our, our trade for it, whatever, if the city deems that acceptable. That's in that park Jerry. also. I, Go ahead, Howard. Um, I was just gonna say that area also, how do I say, is kind of natural. I, 
it's called the botanical park, but I don't really think there's that much other things planted in, in there than things that have just always been growing there. I don't think it's like a true botanical park that has a, a lot of different species. I think it's a lot of still local stuff, isn't it? Well, Howard, I'm going to talk, what you're saying is totally correct. And I'm going to talk about that. There's something I'm going to bring up at the end of, two things I'm going to bring up at the end of the meeting. And that's, and that's one of them. Yes. Okay. It's more of a, you know, it's an old quarry. And, you know, there's some apple trees, there's some pine trees, there's some, you know, big leaf maples, lots of poison oak, right, Car Carmen? We're going to get rid of that. You know, a few <laughs> after, you know, so, yeah, it's, 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 it, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a botanical garden as most people would interpret a botanical garden. It's more of a nature park. I'm yeah. admittedly happy to hear that. I love nature parks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, oh, go ahead, John. Okay. You're waving. <laughs> uh, just, you mentioned Millard Road, the property on there that was acquired for the hospital originally and then was reverted back to the city, if you recall. And yes. uh, I think that what I, if I recall what the city said in the last couple of meetings is that they were looking at developing housing along along the, set, the, the street along Millard, off Millard Road, at the bottom portion down by the creek remaining more wild than it was. But the, the other, and another portion of that is is a piece of property on Ross Road, which is a good size <clears throat> piece of property that was originally traded to the uh, the deal with the school, with the school and the hospital and the city all were, I, I was going to say in collusion, but that's, that's a negative connotation. Uh, but, but there were some manipulations going on with it. And, uh, and it, it's going to come back to the, to the Ross Road side, that puppy piece of property is going to come back that was lost in the school district. And one of the things we've talked about putting up there was a, uh, so, uh, softball baseball complex and so I, I don't know if any of that property is in their plans to trade for uh, the park on uh, next to the Columbia Botanical Gardens yeah, so, John, the, know, the, I, the, Ross, the, the, the Ross Road property that's going to be a real big park like you say with eventually with baseball fields and everything else but the Millard property, the front part of that, the wetland portion mm -hmm. that's the, down by the creek, the city was mm -hmm. thinking about making that into maybe a park, maybe. But the upper part, uh, the part that's that's, I guess I guess that would be the south end of it, the, the part that's yeah. facing Millard Road. Uh, the city, yeah. their intention is to sell that. My intention, my. It, my mm -hmm. understanding was the city was going to sell that property. It was going to develop it into a residential area. And then I the think Ross that's correct. Street, and the Ross Street property was going to be a really nice, uh, large park. I think both of those are correct. And I, I, and I assume they're still going forward with that uh, portion off of Millard. And there is, there is some wetlands up on the upper section next to Millard Road itself, too. And it sits down there a little bit, but you can get through there if you come on. John, I, I know those two wetlands intimately. I know some more time there than I have, that's for sure. That was all I had. Okay. Um, and I just, I know that Matt's on the line. So if Matt wants to chime in or not, he is welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can chime in for just some informational tidbits. Um, so a couple things to mention on the parks and trails master plan. Um, I agree with everything Jerry said. Um, I focus more on what data we have currently, which is the 2010 census. Um, however, that is just on the page before, it's like 45. Um, it still says you need more nature parks of like 15.9 acres. Um, and I know Shauna has it in her uh, 
plans this next year to hopefully get started on a new master plan to update all that information. Um, we've also talked about reclassifying some of our parks um, with a consultant that comes in to do the master plan, um, just to make sure everything is accurately portrayed and so that we can best utilize system development charge funds to do improvements. On the Millard Road property, I obviously don't speak for the city council, but I will say that from the direction that I've seen from what the city council has done so far, they intend to sell that Millard Road property as one whole piece um, for a single developer to do a whole community development master plan for that area. That includes walking trails, wetland mitigation, and connectivity all the way uh, from the front to the back and with the trestle and everything out there. Um, uh, you are correct in that the intention is when we sell that property to use some of those funds to purchase the Ross Road property up by the church to create that future softball, baseball complex, park, whatever you want to call it. Um, I will say it's, I was at the Columbia Botanical Gardens probably three or so months ago. And just because I had never been there. And so during my lunch, I went out there and walked around. Um, I think I'm being nice when I say that it needs some major improvement and help. Um, I did get lost um, because I couldn't follow the signs in there. Luckily, it's not too big of a park and I ended up on some rocky knoll or something and found my way to a street and found my way back, but um, I did get lost. Um, I had to call Shauna for help. Um, so luckily, I'm feeling so fun. So, um, but with that said, I do just personally really like the idea of expanding the park um, and the options as well as that future. If you decide to recommend to the city to purchase that, there's a lot of future development along the other side of the road for like parking um, to enter that park area. And I think that's definitely one issue that I had when I went there, I, I saw the entrance and I mean, it, you just pull off to the side of the road and <laughs> uh, it, there's definitely some improvements that need. And I think that expansion could really help on some of those back roads uh, with doing some parking in there. So it is possible 275 is probably an appropriate amount. We would probably as a city just have somebody do some market analysis to see what it's actually worth. I did want to throw out one oddball idea to the Parks Commission because that's what I like to do. I like to think outside the box. Um, when I was recently touring all the parks with Sean and Mohammed, um, we came across Civic Pride Park. And that is a park that I think is really underutilized. In the past, last year, like two years ago, when we were getting Eisenschmidt Pool to change their name to get away from the Parks and Rec District. Um, we actually um, even threw out the offer to give them Columbia View Park because we know they wanted to expand into a water area outside and everything. Um, as of that conversation two years ago, they were not interested at all um, and had their own plans to do their own thing on their own property. Um, I recently talked with the planning department about what it would look like if parts of Columbia View Park were developed. Um, there is uh, a sewer line that kind of goes right in hey, the Hey, Matt, middle. just real quick, not Columbia View Park, Civic Pride. Oh, sorry, Civic Pride Park, yeah, sorry. That's <laughs> 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 chaos. <laughs> Woo! Uh, sorry, I didn't want to freak anybody out. Um, so you there's a sewer line. <laughs> there's a sewer line that goes right down Civic Pride Park. Um, off, if you're staring at the, if you're on the side of the pool and looking towards uh, the market, um, off to the left of the sewer line, there is a possible development. It's zoned mixed, or right now the park is public lands, but all around there is actually zoned mixed use. So it could be an apartment complex, it could be townhomes, it could be single family homes. Um, off to the right is a, a smaller section of the park that I would envision the city keeping as a just a smaller Civic Pride Park that could actually develop with that development. Um, but I just want to throw out the idea um, that I know, Jerry, you mentioned about a trade, and I'm not sure if um, 
since they are developers. I know Millard Property probably would not be high on the list to do for this trade, but Civic Pride Park, which I know is in the has been in the master plan for quite some time, nothing has happened. Um, so I just want to throw that out as an idea for a possible trade. Um, mm -hmm just in the future, because honestly, I don't know what the future holds for Civic Pride Park. I know we have plans, but those are plans on paper that honestly, I think you as a committee and as a city, I think we have larger needs in our other parks um, that we already have. And you know that we have a very small staff and it can be hard to maintain our parks um, just because the level of staffing that we have. So adding more um, could be a little bit of an issue down the road. So I just want to throw that trade out there as an option to possibly look at. And Jerry Mayor? has his hand up. He's had it up for a little while. So I, will, I, will, I, will, Sorry. I will let John go first. What do they say in the Senate? I, uh, what do they say in the Senate? I concede my time to John. That's right. Yeah, I'll give you any back that I don't use. I, Matt, I just had a quick question. It, do we need to really do anything, or does it, it kind of this kind of stuff fall in the works? We're, we're like looking for a plan, but rather than make uh, recommendations, would be better off just to give it a little bit of time here and see how things develop a little bit. Depends on how fast you think the property is going to be for sale. In these days, you never know if the developer is going to come in tomorrow and say, yeah, I'll take it for 275 and either they don't know what they're getting into or somebody or it stays for sale for years and nothing happens, in which case maybe we could offer less and still get it. Um, I worry a little bit about the uh, sewer line or the elevation with the sewer not being able to have to have a pump or something to get out of there, I guess, when I pick it up. Are you talking about Civic Pride Park? No, about um, uh, the property for sale. Oh, the uh, there, yeah, the, that's a difficult area to develop. So that I, 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 my feeling is it's probably a little bit overpriced, but because of the elevations. Yep. Jerry, I can see. Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I, Matt, I have two questions. One, if if you you ever get lost in Columbia Botanical Gardens, give me a call. I, <laughs> I, I know that park used to like the back of my hand. Um, the other comment I have is, is at one time, and I didn't really agree with, I wasn't on the city, I didn't have anything to do with this, but across from 6th Street Market there, right next to 6th Street Park, um, there was an area there where people used to park. It was kind of a parking area. And I know that when the school played their, some of their, their girls' soccer games there and other events, people would use that to park. And then eventually the city sold that and a couple houses got built there. And it worked out okay. So my question for you is Matt, does the city own like a lot here or there? I know they own one on on old Portland Road, but there's yes. a house on it. Do they own some proper little pieces, you know, here, you know, that are spread out that, you know, that are actually on streets that maybe people that maybe, you know, Mr. Bailey and Richard Bailey and uh, and Mr. Kersley would like to, you know, have so they could actually, you know, build a house there and make some money. So a couple of years in answer to your question, a couple of years ago when we did the strategic plan, one part of that strategic plan was to review all the property that is owned by the city. And through that process, the city identified um, about a, a little more than a handful of properties. One is the Millard Road property. Um, and then there were three, what I would consider single family home lots um, that it owned. Uh, we took those three and reached out to Habitat for Humanity and Community Action Team to see if they wanted to build homes on those properties. Um, we are still working with Jennifer Anderson, I believe is her name, up at um, Habitat for Humanity on one. Um, although we have found that there are some sewer laterals and other issues with these properties that make them not 
the best ideal like place to put a single family home or it's just plainly un buildable because of a sewer lateral that's right in the middle of the property or something like that. Um, the only other property that we own that is uh, that is technically developable would be, um, it's often referred to as Jacobs Mountain. Um, it's some bluffs that some mining was uh, gonna be done at one time by a developer and then they got into a huge lawsuit. The city ended up purchasing the property. Um, and it's, it's kind of a huge mess that the city just kind of accumulated um, to save attorney fees. So we bought the piece of property so we didn't have to go into litigation. Um, and we still own it. Um, it is not zoned correctly. And there's a lot of land use stuff that still has to go through that. So I wouldn't say that piece of property that I'm talking about is easily sellable to a developer that's ready to go. Um, other than that, there's really no other property, um, that the city owns that isn't used by somebody else. So as much as, yes, we do own a lot of property, um, but we own a lot of property that's unbuildable. I know that's probably not the answer you wanted. <laughs> no, I was hoping that there's some, you know, some lots like that was, you know, on, you know, by Sixth Street Park that were, you know, really easy to build on. But, you know, maybe, Matt, you could look into it and see, you know, what is available and what the possibilities is there. So anyway, do we want to make a motion or not that the city look into buying this property or our uh, trading existing city property for it? I like the idea. Yeah, I like the idea of at least having them look into it and investigate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do too. Leave, leave it a little quiet. I, I agree. Can I ask real quickly, just as a knee-jerk knee reaction, what your thought is on trading part of Civic Pride Park, or if you think that should stay with the city? I think that's a good idea. I do too. Because that's kind of been a thorn, I don't want to say a thorn in our side, but it's just been a hard park to deal with in there, you know? So how many houses? We voted. Um, I agree. So, no, uh, I was, no, John, that's fine. I don't know if, Carmen, if you can pull up just a map of Civic Pride Park, or um, you can let me share my screen and I can put it up. If you are ready to go, I will let you share your screen if yeah. I can figure that out. You uh, you a... So what what would these be zoned as? Would be, these be... Would these be 5,000 square feet, R10? Well, oh, so let me show you here. So this is Civic Pride Park. You should all see Aisha Smith Pool here on the right. Yeah. Um, and what I'm talking about, I'm assuming you guys can see my cursor. Yes. Um, OK, so from 11th Street here, this technically is a street. However, there's a big tree right here, right in the middle. Um, so it's not really a developed road, so to speak. Um, However, talking with Jacob and Jenny, what would likely happen is that I am talking about selling this portion of Civic Pride Park here on the left. Now there is a sewer lateral that kind of goes in between this lot line right here and then goes diagonally across and then down. So there is a potential that you could relocate that sewer line to go straight across a property line here. Um, you could also develop this area in a way that it doesn't go over the sewer line. Um, and so you could still develop, you know, three quarters of it or so. Um, so my off the wall idea was to sell Civic Pride Park and just this portion. Now Civic Pride Park, like I mentioned, is zoned public land. All of this area out here, even though it is single family residence, is zoned mixed use. And that's due to its location of Columbia Boulevard and St. Helens Market, okay? So because it's so close to a main road, they zoned it mixed use. Now, so that means it could be apartments, it could be townhomes, or it could still be single family homes. But the idea was that to give access to these properties, they would need to build a road that is kind of already there, it's already paved, but they would access these houses from the rear entrance here. And so the city would maintain the center here because that's where a sewer lateral goes through. And it would also maintain this portion up here 
which would be a smaller Civic Pride Park. Like and, a pocket park, <laughs> you know? Exactly, exactly, Howard. It's, it's exactly like a pocket park. And this could be developed into a little small play structure. You could, you could potentially sell this land to a developer with the contingents that they put a playground over here. I mean, anything is possible. Um, but with its location to Lewis and Clark Elementary, um, you know, they could very well just use the playground over at the, at the school. Um, but so there are a lot of opportunities here. I just thought it's kind of a, like you said, Howard and, and others have said, it's kind of a weird park that you kind of just got left with, so to speak. Um, and I think you have larger priorities in other parks and with staffing, it's possible that a developer could very easily come in and put in a row of townhomes and easily make more than the $275,000 that they're trading for. Jerry, you had another question? Yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of my question, Matt, what you said there. I mean, I know you're not a real estate agent. I'm definitely not a real estate agent. I, I, it looked to me like there was like three houses that were to the left of that as we were looking at it. So, you know, probably 15,000 yeah, square feet or so. At, if you're looking at single family homes, you're probably looking at three decent sized lots. If yeah. you're thinking more of a developer, um, I'm going to guess that they're going to be looking at six townhomes. Um, and if it's anything like the market today, those townhomes are going to sell for probably 400 some odd thousand dollars, if not more. So um, what do you think those three lots, just off your head, what do you think those three lots are worth? I know that you'd, you'd have to have them appraised, but I'm just off, off the top. I can use and I can use an appraiser that we did for the three single family homes that I talked about um, that are in the property. And those came back at about $60,000. Um, so if you're using that kind of basic single family lot projection, I would assume 60 grand per lot. Um, however, if you can do mixed use, um, that definitely ups the revenue potential. Yeah, I'd like to see someone make a proposal that, uh, you know, I mean, it, I don't know. I mean, I like the idea of expanding Columbia Botanical Gardens. I know that area down there, the Civic Pride Park's not used very much, that particular area. So, someone want to make a motion? Two, Jerry, I think you got two motions. I think you got one about the city looking into Civic Pride Park for a possible uh, uh, home building, and then you have another motion to kind of a, 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 try and acquire the uh, uh, property next to uh, the botanical gardens. But I wouldn't what? want to see us sell or get rid of one park and not get more property for another. So I feel like they would almost be a combined motion. Try, try and get the other property, but also try and do the, sell the property to find the money for it over at Civic Pride. That makes sense. I think, I think, in, the, I think in the future, you know, us getting the five acres and increasing the nature park would offset losing, you know, the three lots there because you could still have the pocket park in front and maybe a little park next to, you know, an open, at least a grass area next to this pool there. So I, I, I think that if we, I know John, it might have to be two or three motions, but, you know, I, I think those three lots, versus mm -hmm. the five acres if you know if mr kersley and mr bailey were willing to you know I, I know it has to be appraised they may have to end up paying more money who knows if they want it but you know they're into making money so i mean i mean i mean i mean that in a positive way uh so i think they'd probably be interested in maybe uh talking to the city or the city talking to them or vice versa I would think so. We don't know what they actually have invested in that piece of property up there either, do we? We just know what they're selling it for. It, it's like it's like Matt and you said, John. It, it's going it, to they've had it for a long time, and it's going to cost a lot to get that developed be, because of of its location. I know that they'd like probably like to get it off their hands. 
I like the idea of okay, expanding cool. the botanical gardens to have connectivity. My only mm -hmm. concern would be that right now we have we have the botanical gardens and we haven't done anything with them to improve them. Um, so the amount of use that the botanical gardens is getting, I think is maybe not as much as it could be. And maybe that would be better with the connectivity or maybe if we could, if we are able to acquire that property, then make a commitment to improving the properties so that it's used and not just property that's sitting there. I mean, Civic Pride is kind of the same right now too, where it's just sitting there. We don't have any special things there for people to <laughs> use, but that's just my perspective on it. There are a couple okay. of trash cans. That's about it. Yeah. I think the Botanical Park is a uh, diamond in the rough. It's something that, Agreed. you know, we need to keep our hands on and that hopefully we can, we'd love to find a group of people who would love to take it on as a friends group <laughs> and start well, next, uh, working on it to make Next it month, Carmen and I are going to organize a cleanup in May. Let's do it. Okay. And we're going to get try to get rid of the poison oak also. Okay. Oh, I, okay. So does yeah, someone... I want to say a couple things here. Okay. <laughs> I, and then I, we I totally should try agree. to make a motion. I, I soon. totally agree with what Carmen and Matt said. You know, the, the park is, it's not very well developed. For nine years, I used to go, you know, nine years ago, from 19 years ago to nine years ago, I used to go down there every day and clean up the trails and stuff. I just don't go down there anymore because my dog has changed. You're right. The park is a mess. I mean, it's not developed anyway. But let's not lose perception that, you know, you know, right now we have, I don't know how many people, but in, in 2030, it's projected that we'll have 17,482 people. And it just just because it's not it's not developed now doesn't mean that it can't be really a nice nature park somewhere down the line. It might be next year, it might be 10 years, it might be 20 years. But if the city doesn't own that, it's not going to get developed as a, as a, as a nature park. So so I, why don't we get a couple of proposals, Carmen? If I'm not going to do yeah. it, but. Uh, <laughs> like John says, but I kind of like to have them linked. I kind of agree with what you said, Carmen, you know, I don't think we should, you know, maybe sell those, that property down there without linking it up to the botanical gardens. Yeah. What if we, I'm just going to kind of talk through it, made a motion that was something along the lines of asking city council or the city to look into the property that's for sale. That's, against the botanical gardens. Um, and in that investigation, review potential for part of civic pride, civic pride, right? Yes, civic pride. <laughs> um, as a potential trade or any other um, property that staff or city council think might be a good option or paying outright. Um, at least investigate the different options. That's really long-winded. So someone else who wants to reword that and make a motion. <laughs> I would say Should just what you said and make a motion. <laughs> what, what was that, Howard? I, I said what you, just, what you just said, I would, I would put my name to that and say that was the motion if you want to read that back or you read that. <laughs> but that would be my motion is exactly what you just said. How about if we make a motion that the city consider alternatives for purchasing, uh, I don't know what we call that, whatever the name of that is, uh, the Bailey Kersley property and also divesting itself of the Civic Pride Park. Property a, portion, about. a portion of the city. Yeah, a portion. Yeah, portion. And I would say in accordance, like associated with getting this other property, we don't just want to get rid of, we don't want them to take the, the part of the recommendation that's get rid of part of civic pride and not get something else for it. Take the money and buy Matt a new house. <laughs> well, it, it, Sorry, it, Matt. It, it, <laughs> and the city could end up maybe making money on this trade also. That's a yeah. possibility. Yeah. 
Okay. So do we have a motion? <laughs> Ish. <laughs> Sherry, are you there? Your name? <laughs> we had a recommendation. Would you like me to read what I wrote? <laughs> yes, please. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Recommend that council look into property for sale but next to the botanical garden and look at a portion of civic pride or other property staff or council thinks might be good for a trade or buy the property outright. Perfect. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't make the motion. I just read. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'll make a motion based on what you just said then. Can, can I say it that way? On what you just read, I make a motion. Okay. okay I second it. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And anyone opposed? Great. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks for bringing that up, Jerry. Mm -hmm. well, I live down here. I walk by the signs about three or four times a week. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right, and thanks for the conversation on that, Matt, and talking through that with us. Yep, not a problem. I appreciate you uh, amusing my off the wall idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> I, I think that's a great idea. But like I said, the city might even actually end up making some money on that. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna move on to old business. Uh, which is update on identifying parks volunteers. I'll take that one. Ooh, yay. Thanks, Sherry. Howard, Howard asked about this because Kathy was going to make some sort of volunteer form that included an identification card of some kind. So I asked Kathy about it. And when she was working on that last year, COVID hit. So it's one of the many things that got put on the back burner. She will work on it this month and give us an update at the May meeting. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. That was a quick one. So now we will go on to discussion items. Um, do we want to? Oh, Lynn, go ahead. Yeah, I just got one short thing. Uh, we're going to have a work party this coming Saturday at Dalton Preserve, and it's from 9 to 12 or 9 to 11. And actually, Howard's coming and he's going to help us cut the blackberries, cutting blackberries and ivy. Great. You're all invited. <laughs> Where do people meet for that, Lynn? We're going to meet at the, at kiosk. the kiosk, but then again, people need oh. to park uh, across from the Rutherford Parkway at the Oregon oh. Humane Society or the Columbia Humane oh. Society. Okay. And bring your, own, bring your own tools for people, yes. I imagine. Okay. Yes. Clippers, your gloves, and dress for the weather. Okay. Supposed to be sunny. It's supposed to be warm. Yes. Right? <laughs> warm. <laughs> All right. I don't know whose hand went up first, Jerry or Howard. Howard, Go ahead, Jerry. Oh, I did. <laughs> okay. Hey, I have two things. And I don't want us to discuss these because <laughs> look at Shauna. She's down there laughing already because her and I talked about one of them already. Um, so this is just something for you to think about. And Sherry, maybe next meeting, put both of these on the agenda so we can really, you know, officially discuss them. So one thing is just kind of a kind of a harebrained thing I'm thinking about. So we have what's called the Columbia Botanical Gardens. I think it's misnamed. Now, do things change? Yes, you know, the Parks and Rec changed you know so they wouldn't get the swimming pool confused with the city you know oak street used to be third street used to be oak street uh Sixth <laughs> street park used to be union union park uh, columbia botanical gardens i mean it's it's a nice name i like the name but i don't think it really catches what the park really is, kind of like what Howard was saying at the beginning. It's an old, most of it is an old quarry and the bottom part is, is a wetlands that runs through a low area. And some things that I've thought about is like, maybe it could be called like uh, the old quarry botanical gardens or the Italian 
because I my understand you know like we could like you know at the beginning we were talking about bread and he was talking about historical things you know a lot of the cobblestones that were used in Portland came from this area and you know we could maybe call it the Italian the old the, the Italian quarry botanical gardens of the Italian quarry nature park you know something like that and at the beginning of it you know we could get some of the portland has piles of these cobblestones i've been told they're like mountains that are stored and you know i i think the city could probably get a hold of some of those and you know kind of make a real neat entryway to the park but what i'd like people to think about is this a good idea <laughs> or is it a bad idea to change the name of the park i think like i said i think that you know, as I've said, things have changed, you know, the streets, the park names, and hopefully St. Helens will be around for hundreds of years. And somewhere down the line, it would be nice if people know that this was maybe an old Italian quarry natural park, you know, and when they, you know, maybe we could, you know, when they come to it, they could see pictures of the people, you know, and, and I know the historical society has lots of pictures of it. So, what I would like for people to do is between now and the next meeting, think of, hey, is this a good idea to change it or not? I know that my ideas are not always good, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'd like to, I think it might be a good idea. Or, and if you do think it's a good idea, maybe come up with some, some names that are more descriptive because it is a nature park. It's not a botanical garden. It is an old quarry, it, da, 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 da. And I think it could have, uh, it could be a more, a little more descriptive because most people don't call it the Columbia Botanical Gardens. You know, I don't know. But, so I'd like for people to think about that. And Sherry, I'd like for you to put that on the agenda for next meeting, if you would, please. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, the second, the second thing <laughs> is even. That wasn't it. <laughs> that's it. You got to think, John. You got a whole month to think. You got a whole month to get back at me, and I know you love that. So. I, might, I might have COVID by then. So the second thing I want to bring up, and uh, uh, we used to be called the, the Parks Commission, and then in, a couple of years ago we were called the Parks and Trails Commission. Now the I, I the chain of command that's not the real word I want to use this the. the the reporting structure of the city has changed. So now we have Mohammed, who's in charge of public works. Is that right, Mohammed? All public works. Now we have Shauna, who's in charge of parks and recreation. And Thad is now under Shannon taking care of the parks. I don't, I know that in the past we've, well, I wouldn't say I have, but John and some people have, you know, we, we've organized, talked about scheduling rec softball, baseball tournaments and all this stuff. So one thing that maybe we sh would think about is now changing our name again to the Parks and Rec Commission. Nah. Hmm. <laughs> well, you got a whole month no. to think about it because Shauna is now... <laughs> She, she comes to us with rec like last time we talked about in, I got to get the name of the park right, uh, in Campbell Park, wasn't there going to be like a little walk or something, an educational walk? The Born Learning Trails. Yeah, the Born Learning the born well, it Trails. The trail. <laughs> it's a recreation thing. And so, you know, I don't know if this is more really probably the city. Does the city... So right now we take input from ourselves and from the citizens because it's open. So they have an opportunity to come to us and say anything they want to about parks. But in the present setup we have, citizens do not have an open forum to come and address the city on rec matters. They either have to go to Muhammad or they have to go to Shannon. So. I think it would be a natural evolution that we become the, the, the Parks and Rec Commission. And then, you know, we're, we deal with Shannon all the, 
you know, we deal with Shannon's here all the time. We deal with her all the time. So she's, she's in charge of parks. She oversees parks. She oversees recreation. And she's going to be here probably most of the time anyway. So, and it gives people an opportunity to talk. So I, I think that maybe we could become the parks and rec commission. I know you don't want discussion right now. My only hesitation on that is that we have pretty full agendas every month. Um, and we even bumped up our meetings to be every month instead of every other month. And they usually go about two hours um, just covering parks and trail stuff. So if we add recreation to that, I imagine our agendas will grow. And I'm worried that we won't be able to cover mm -hmm. all the things that we would need to cover in the meeting. So that's my only hesitation, but happy to talk about it more and think on it yeah. for next month. So here's, I think that, here. sorry, Jerry, but I think that Mohammed's going to talk more about this as well. Not today, but I think we're looking at how other communities position that because it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the same as advising the council on what recreation can do, but, and I think it already happens, or I know when I was on the parks commission year or helped with things with it, people would come if they had concerns about the softball field or softball league stuff. So it's same kind of thing. I don't think it would change much. I think what Jerry's talking about is it is a new structure of departments. So now we are the parks and recreation department now. So I think Mohammed is going to come and talk more about that, but definitely thank you for putting it out there, Jerry. And, and we'll, well, with, you know, I don't, you know, I don't have, I don't, you know, I don't have anything really vested in this. I don't, you know, care which way it goes, but I, I guess I do care a little bit. I guess I wouldn't have brought it up, but <laughs> if, and I, and I see Carmen's point totally, but if we're going to have, maybe the city needs to talk about, and uh, you were talking to Mohammed. Maybe the city needs to have a, a rec commission, you know, that deals with recreation. Yeah, and, and I'll look at some other cities and see how they're set up too and, and how they manage that because you're right, we don't want to have a five hour meeting once a month about <laughs> that sort of thing. I mean, maybe um, Howard does, but I do. <laughs> I know. When we became a department, are we separate from the budget now? Is it a separate budget item, or are we still under uh, general budget and, par and uh, public works? So Parks and Rec, I believe this next budget cycle are still going to be separate. We're both under the general funds, but just to kind of help see exactly what we're bringing in and that sort of thing before we combine um, budget items, just to keep it a little bit more, more simpler right now, since it's new. Mm -hmm. Um, but we definitely both are under the same uh, general general fund. Yeah, because the department usually means a separate separate entity, and so I, I, I don't think I'd want to see that on the name. Just my observation. <laughs> Do we have to vote now? I don't think so. We're not going to vote. Um, I think we have, well, we will, we'll vote. Uh, but I think we have Howard has something next. Yep. As long as it's not about. About what? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, I got a bunch of little things. I'll try to do as much as I can, as quickly as I can. Uh, first, I was hoping that Emily Martin would have uh, spoke for a moment. She is actually with the Scappoos Bay Watershed Council and is kind of their restoration person now and is heading up the uh, Fifth Street right of way uh, 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 grant that's gonna be coming in. If you wonder who Emily Martin is, I don't know if any of you have heard of her or not. She also operates the uh, uh, Scapu or the uh, Watersheds uh, Nursery in, in uh, Scapoose. Um, we uh, had uh, 20 people show up yesterday for our uh, annual or semi-annual uh, uh, tour with uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, Native Plant Society of Oregon, and there were a lot of fawn lilies, chocolate lilies, and trillium blooming in the park right now. So if you're looking for uh, wildflowers right now, uh, then uh, Knock Hill Nature Park, all of our uh, all of those flowers are in perfect bloom right now, and a lot of them are really, really close close to the edge of the trail. 
Um, uh, we did also get from the city, we got one of the benches uh, uh, from the Lions Club, which is a extremely neat thing. And we actually have made contact now with the Lions Club to see if we could get uh, more of those benches. So we're gonna start trying to collect our plastic to add to that because that's such a neat bench. We'd like to see if we can get more of the same ones in Knob Hill. Um, also, a couple of weeks ago, we had our uh, semi-annual work party, which was broken up into a morning session and an afternoon session. And uh, Emily took the uh, 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 morning, there was about uh, 13 people, and uh, took some of the people from our afternoon work session, and they uh, gave almost uh, 50, 50, uh, uh, 52 hours in the uh, uh, Fifth Street right away and clearing of blackberries and stuff and they pulled out a bunch of trash and tires and then we had about 51 hours of volunteerism in the park so in that one day of that Saturday we gave almost 109 hours of man hours to uh, Knob Hill Nature Park including planting and weeding and then as uh, Lynn mentioned um, with a grant from the Watershed Council and and uh, some donations from other people and a close personal friend. We did acquire a new weed eater for the park, uh, which actually got a beautiful blade on it. So it'll gobble up blackberries and stuff. And that's why I thought I would go over and check it out a little bit more for Lynn over at uh, Dalton Lake. And uh, with that, I think I've, I'll, I'll stop right there since I think the meeting is running off. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. <laughs> Um, I think next we can do discussion on the um, four candidates for the Parks and Trails Commission, three that we interviewed. Um, so if there's any discussion that y'all want to have, or if we just want to do it as a vote, um, we could number them one, two, three, four, if we even want, I don't think we want to vote on the person who didn't come, Jeff. Um, but open to discussion. Well, Carmen, I'd like for the voting to be, uh, you know, confidential. Okay. Do you all want to send me um, in, are you all able to access the chat and send me a private chat, not to the everyone? Right now? Uh, I don't know if I know how to do the chat to be truthful. Could we call you, Carmen? Mm -hmm. Our email, our, 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 give you a, a mess, a, a message, message you. I'm sending you a message in the chat right now, Carmen. Looks like she just froze up. He's very stoic. Yeah, I'm just not sure how I'd send a message in any way. Um, you go into chat, and then it says two, and you've got the list, and you pick her name instead of everyone. Okay. Chat, and then go into Carmen's chat, name, like Carmen. and then you go to the two, and there's a drop-down box. I'm not seeing a two. Well, it's it. two. It would be two. Carmen Dunn. You got to go to the drop down box. We're in the drop down box. Is it down here? Everyone. Everyone means everybody's going to get it. Uh -huh. You want to look for Carmen? Oh, oh I see. Okay. I don't see Carmen's name in my list. I don't either. I don't either. I don't either. <laughs> she's not on. I, oh, wait, think wait, she's wait. I got it. I got it. She had to drop off. We're going to have to wait till she comes logs back in. <laughs> Lunch, so, pop up on there. so just what did it do? I just hit her up here. Yeah, wait. Yeah, she's yeah, not in anymore. She go home. <laughs> Dropped off. Oh. Right. Okay. If you. Okay. Here she comes. Joining back. She's back. Oh, there's she's able to select her name now. Okay, so. 
Hey, Carmen, I sent my okay. vote into you under the chat. And I'm still not seeing Carmen's drive come up in the chat. At the very bottom. I see Thad Brandy. All right, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Lynn, you might have to resend it if she Okay, dropped off. off. Sorry, okay. my internet just stopped. Yeah, my internet now. Let's see if I can figure out the chat. Um, did you guys decide how you're going to send? Um, I don't know how to hit your vote. Your vote. Okay, that. Yeah, vote for right, one, see. and we'll see. If we don't have a tie, then um, <laughs> we'll go for it. If we have a tie, then we'll narrow it down further. Did you get mine, Carmen? And uh, yes, I've got yours. You're the only one that I have so far. Carmen, I don't. Oh, I'm like I'm, I'm like Howard. Oh. I don't. I can't find you on your. Can I send you a message by on your phone number? Yeah, if you can text me or text try to you? send me yeah. an email. Yeah. No, I'll text. I'll text you. Okay. Sounds if I can't good. Get I'll this try to do it. I'm, out, if I can't I'm get this figured out. I'm multitasking on my phone right now, so we'll see how well this goes. And. Um, can, can I just say which one I want? I don't care if my yeah, vote is private. Or not. Brandon, yeah, the mind. first. Brandon, the first one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and okay. Lisa, I tried Lisa. to send. I tried to send you a second message, but it says you're not in the meeting yet. Oh, I'm here. I promise. You might need to look for a different Carmen because I had to join from a different device. I joined from. Okay. My phone. So it might have done something weird with my computer. Okay, John, Lynn, um, I, I went to chat. I went to chat. And then mm -hmm. I, I got these things that says Shannon to everyone, Emily to it, everyone, da, da 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 Pat to everyone. And then down at the bottom, it says send to Shannon. And I can you I, send to me? Can you send to see, Carmen? I don't see Carmen anywhere. Send to Carmen. Well, shoot. Here, keep the little scroll Here, bar on the right side. Right. Say that again, John. Okay, you should get it now. Right, right side of chat. There's a little Just scroll second. Wait, bar. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get there. Just a second. I'm out of there now. It went through this time, Carmen. Okay, okay I got it. Thank you. Okay, and okay I got John, calls. I'm on. I'm on chat. Try, try and move that scroll bar, bar up and down. If you see if you can find Carmen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Carmen? Oh, okay. I do see it now. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. So, um, Jerry, I think you're the last one we need. Okay. I, I, but I, think I don't I've know. Got, that we I need think I have this figured out, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Jerry, tell me who it is and I'll send it for you. There we go. <laughs> oh, I got power once again. I would prefer my vote. To, I prefer my vote to be my own business. Just send the initials then. <laughs> Fine language. Oh, sorry. Any luck, Jerry? Because if so, not, I, I think we, we I, have I enough I'm votes saying, for I, one I person. I got the bar to come up. You have enough for one person? <laughs> yeah, we have enough for one person. So, Jerry, if you're okay with we, taking that, I don't know if we need to send the votes to Sherry at all. I don't think we need that, but once we make the motion. If my vote doesn't make any difference, <laughs> I'd be glad <laughs> Sorry. to be from voting then. But I'm, I'm upset okay, that great. I can't get this um, to work. I'm good with that, Carmen. So, okay, based on the votes, um, we got majority for Brandon. So, based on that, I make a motion that we recommend Brandon for Brandon for the um, vacancy on the Parks and Trails Commission. Since I didn't vote, I'll second that. Okay. Um, Carmen, you can't make the motion because yeah. you're the chair. Oh, I can't. Oh, okay. no, just kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll move that I recommend the D be appointed to the position based on the vote. I'll okay. second it. Somebody else. Great. There you go. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 
great. Congratulations, Brandon, if you're still on the line. And thanks for everybody else who joined and may still be on the line um, or who applied. Um, we appreciate it. Um, and then anything else that anyone has for discussion items before we adjourn the meeting? Well, one thing I would like to say, Carmen, is that um, Ms. Carlson, she said she's interested in being on the budget committee. Mm -hmm. I would like to see her still pursue that because I think with all of her past experience, she could really add a lot to the, uh, to the city's budget procedures with what she knows and everything. Definitely. And Brandon is the only one who had uh, just park selected. Everybody else had multiple commissions selected. So maybe they'll mm -hmm. get chosen for another commission and still be able to oh, contribute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jerry, who's dad? Who's dad Troy? Okay. Any? Uh, Jerry, what's when's the best time to get a hold of you, or how? The best time, the, the best way to get a hold of me is to call me on my cell phone. Okay. And the best time is probably in the evening. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Any okay, other good. discussion? Yes. 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 One thing. Okay. Uh, little Thank update you. on the. <laughs> McCormick Park Playground, uh, they are working very diligently on it and there are quite a few items that are up. And so it will be completed before we know it, it will be up and running and it is absolutely uh, huge to say the least. It's awesome. Yep. I ran by it yesterday and it looks so cool to see things coming together. Yeah, it's right. gonna be really special. Mm -hmm. That's all no. I have. All right. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, everybody. Meeting adjourned, and we'll see you next month. Bye. Good evening to all. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Okay. Oh, God. Excel, make sure you're out of it before you start talking. Yep, you look like.